Praise God. I have three testimonies. Miracle healing through the use of the mantle. I want to return all the glory to God for healing me of ear pain in my right ear and chest pain. The ear pain started about two years ago due to premenstrual syndrome. It comes with 10 days of severe pain from any part of my body. I spoke to Dr. Tayo and he prescribed a strong painkiller for the pain, but at some point I stopped taking it because I didn't see much difference. And I continued to pray in faith for permanent healing. And then three days ago, I also noticed the chest pain, so I reached out for the mantle. I tied it over my head, covering my ear. Immediately, the pain ceased. I also laid the mantle on my chest and the pain left immediately. My second testimony. During the last eruption conference in 2021, Pastor Keke prophesied over my life saying that he can see that I'm being frustrated. But before March 17, 2022, all will be gone and told me to increase my service in church. March 21st happens to be my birthday, so I keyed into the prophecy. I prayed and fasted. Fast forward to March 2022, I was in my department serving and I was immediately called to the main church to be an assistant head to a new department and Reverend laid his hands on us. It was like a miracle and I knew God had begun with me. Later in that year, I also prayed a prayer of inquiry and suddenly I heard a voice which told me to start my fashion business again and I was led on how to go about it. It started booming and I had lots of customers in church. In fact, my sales in December was more than I imagined. Around March this year, I heard the same voice which says I should stop the business and the instruction was that the money in my account was a sacrificial seed and that I shouldn't touch any of the seed for myself. At that time, I sold to my parents. I also sold towards my father's birthday. I also gave a token to a church member who was facing some health challenges. Despite not being in business for some while, and with so much pressure to why I stopped business, I could only share my revelation to my family, but still, they didn't understand it. God has been faithful, and I am expectant, and in these past few days, God has shown his light upon me to start my business in a mega way. My third testimony is concerning sound health and immunity. Throughout the year, we've been praying for immunity and I thank God that I have not had to use paracetamol for my children. And I only got treated for malaria once this year and it was due to stress. I want to thank God because I know that my testimony is not over yet. I am here to return all the glory to God and to thank God for using our father, Reverend Deji Olabode, as a covering. Thank you, sir, for yielding to God's call. I am Mrs. A.K. Testimony of spoken words concerning my job. Hello, Dad. Thank you for blessing us at the Newness Conference as always. Dad, you spoke concerning us last week as touching the issue of my induction, which was suspended for over four weeks. You said nothing that is ours will be withheld from us. You also spoke Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7 over us, among other words released for my birthday. Dad, to the glory of God, I was the only one inducted as of this Wednesday. I also checked the dashboard and discovered that the way I was scheduled to be paid is only entitled to those who have been working consistently with the agency for over four months. How it was assumed that I've been working with them all this while, I cannot explain. Thank you, Dad, for not leaving us without a cover. I have returned to give glory to God. Mr. A.A. A. School fees paid. Good day, church. I'm here to return all glory to God for the payment of my school fees. The school fees portal was about to be closed after it had been reopened twice. I cried my eyes out and prayed to God to have mercy and provide for me. I could not sleep at night because my heart was heavy. I prayed, cried and lamented, but all to no avail. 
I lost all hope because I had not been able to raise a single penny. I sent a broadcast to my contact asking for assistance. My partner also tried from his end, but nothing came out of it. The following day, I made up my mind not to fast since God refused to hear me. My partner asked me not to worry, but I only heard the advice. I did not take it. I went to school that morning. I was at my rehearsal ground when my partner called me that he had just received 50,000 naira from his sister. I was very happy. I thanked God and danced on my rehearsal ground. In less than two minutes, he called again and told me he just received another alert from his sister. When I asked how much, he made it clear that it was more than the fee we have been praying for. I was the happiest woman in the world at that moment. I thanked God for coming through and immediately asked for mercy because I allowed my fear take over me. I am Miss S.A. My Miracle Alert Hello Church. I thank God because I needed to make a foreign payment which had been delayed for weeks because I had spent the money on something else. The client who had the job was almost embarrassing me and gave me a mandate to pay unfailingly on Friday 20th October. Till the time banks closed, I couldn't get the money and Naira fell to an all-time low about three times that day. Behold, I suddenly received an alert in one of my dollar accounts double the amount I needed to pay. I can't remember ever giving anyone that account number. I paid the money that Friday and had extra. Glory to the God of Enthronement Assembly. I am Mr. O.T.O. Miraculous Debt Cancellation I want to give glory to the name of the Lord. There are these two debts I incurred during the course of the month of October, waiting for my salary. I already made plans to repay them, even though I will be left with very little or nothing out of my salary. During the evening service yesterday, Papa Eboda prophesied that our daily needs will be met, and I keyed into it. I got home and asked the first creditor for account number, and she said I should not worry that the money is mine. I was surprised and speechless. Only to wake up this morning and the second person also called me and asked for something within my disposal that has been standing there useless. He requested for it in replacement of the debt and was even begging me. I can now enjoy my salary in peace. The Lord is good. This is even beyond the money, but a proof that faith works and that the word of God works. Glory to God. I am A.V. Peace restored and rent sorted. I want to testify to the goodness of God. Two months after graduation, things took a bad turn. My phone was stolen and my details were used to get huge loans from various loan apps. My number and BVN were blacklisted. I went into a state of depression. Nothing was interesting to me. I lost it. Things were crumbling right in front of me. No job and paying off the debt was seemingly impossible. And my rent was due because I intended to go for service by June. But due to the issues, I couldn't go and paying my rent was impossible. Landlord kept knocking on my door every day requesting for money. I lost my sleep. Peace. The only option... Ringing in my head then was suicide, but somehow I couldn't do it. I wasn't coming to church because I didn't even know who to talk to. I got several calls from church during that period asking why I wasn't in church because I kept saying I'm going through a lot, but I will try to come next Sunday. Fast forward to the announcement of the 40 days fast. I fought with the negative voice that told me not to participate that it's pointless.
participating in the fast that I would only add hunger to my problem. After contemplating for a while, I joined the fast and I kept praying that God should restore my sleep, peace of mind, help me clear my debts and also pay my rent. Three days into the fast, I started sleeping like someone without a problem. I had peace. The landlord stopped disturbing me like he received the rent payment and I know I didn't send him any money. I'm able to sort part of the loan payments with ease and I know for sure that everything will be sorted miraculously before the completion of this fast. This is me just thanking God for his faithfulness and celebrating the grace on daddy and mommy. God bless you, sir and ma. I am Miss O.G. Divine protection from an accident. Good morning, church. I want to thank the name of the Lord for what happened to me today, the 28th of October, 2023. I wanted to go and get something at the supermarket and I carried my baby along with me because there was no one at home to watch her for me. On my way there, I boarded a bike and while we were going, my bike man wasn't focused because he didn't see that a car was in front of us. The car wanted to enter an area. The bike man should have stopped and waited for him, but before he could manage it, we were already close to the car and our bike hit the car. I almost fell off the bike with my baby. I want to thank the name of the Lord and also our pastor, Reverend Deji Olabode, and our mother, Dr. Shim Olabode, for their unending prayers over our lives because even the bike man didn't see the car coming. Even though my leg hit the car, nothing happened to me and my baby, not even a scratch on my body and no fracture. I'm really grateful and happy because this is a sign prayers are answered here and grace got us covered in this church. Thank you. I am Mrs. O. Good day, church. I am here to give my testimony of divine protection and God saving me from an accident. On Saturday, 21st October 2023, I was on my way to the love circle when the bike we took suddenly wasn't moving as it should, so the man packed and told us Phil had finished. When things like that happen, usually it gets on my nerves, but this time I was calm. So I told my brother to pay him since we were already close to the bus stop. It was at that moment, still on the cob, that I felt a weight on my left foot that even my sneakers couldn't part. Lo and behold, a keke had climbed and rolled my feet in the process. The pain was excruciating. My feet had turned 90 degrees. When I checked my leg, the impact had separated the upper part of my sneaker from the sole. The pain made me oblivious of my surrounding. When I came to, I could see people already defending me against the driver who had no business being where I was standing. It wasn't dropping off a passenger or parking. To the glory of God, I got to the love circle venue and the first thing I did was thank God and share my testimony that what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good. The leg was later checked and I am glad to say there is nothing broken and nothing missing. Even when I thought that I won't be able to wear shoes on Sunday, I was able to walk without a limb although there was occasional pain. I am fine. Mr. C.O. Involved in an accident without any injury. Glory to Jesus, because he's always been faithful to me and my family, and he's done it again for me. I had a job in a lay fair on Saturday and after the event, the groom who happened to be my cosmate back in school asked me to join them back to Oshogo because it was late and I couldn't return back home. On our way to Oshogo, the car that we were in carried the newlywed and the chief bridesmaid and I sat in the front with another guy on the passenger seat so there was no way we could use seatbelt. After driving for a few minutes around Sikona, 
Lincoln Oshogo. The driver entered into a huge ditch and lost control of the car. It was an horrific view, as we couldn't even see the road clearly. As a result of the headlight of an incoming vehicle on the partition road that was on our side, the car lost control, and the next thing was that the car ran into the bush on the other side of the road, and then ran into a hill in the bush. We all came out without sustaining any injury. I want to return the glory back to Jesus, because it would have been a different case if the incoming, if the oncoming vehicle was very close to us. I want to also thank dad and mom for their covering over our lives. I'm a living testimony of God's faithfulness. I am Michael O. Good morning, church. I have come to testify of the fulfillment of prophecies that our Father, Reverend, released over us during the midweek service. I have been trying to get government's approval for my school and it's been proving difficult. Just when we were making headway, our file got transferred to someone else and she has been very adamant on releasing us to move to the next and final stage. I was already so discouraged and I resolved to call her and plead with her if that would work. And then daddy came to us during the midweek service with the prophetic mantle. Reverend prophesied that one, God doesn't have abandoned projects. Two, we have now put on a finishing garment. Three, speed becomes our portion. Four, the wait is over. Five, it will no longer tarry. Six, angelic pace and massive support. Seven, God will take care of our business. Amongst many other prophecies, I held on to these words as daddy instructed. I went back to listen to the message again in the morning. And just as the message ended and I was confessing all the prophecies I had written, a call came in and it was the woman that had been holding on to our file. She called to ask if I was available to come to her office that day to collect our recommendation for approval. This was before 8 a.m. in the morning. It was as though she saw me in her dreams. I went to her office and she was so warm and kind to me. She had recommended us for approval and moved our file to the next stage, which happens to be the final stage. Thank you, Daddy, for always releasing God's counsel over our lives. I have returned to give God all the praise. Praise the Lord, church. I am Torira Jide Olaleye. Good morning, church. I am the one God has shown mercy, and just like the one who returned to give thanks, I have returned to say thank you to the God of Reverend DG Olabode who came through for me in the midst of my trial. Thank you, Daddy, for your prayers and intercession over us. I weaned my child August this year and my menstrual flow started on the 2nd of September. I expected it would last for at most three days, just like when I weaned my first child, but no. After the second week, I was still bleeding, so I asked one of my bosses at the office and she said sometimes it could be like that and that one's hormones could change too. Fast forward to the second week in October, it did not stop and even came out more. I quickly had to visit the healthcare center and I was given an injection to help stop or reduce the flow of blood and was advised that I should return the following week. I went home in faith that all was well. For that day and the following day, the flow reduced and I rejoiced. On the third day, the flow came like a running tap. On the 6th of November, Reverend prayed for healing in church and asked that we check it. I kept on checking in faith. I believed I had received my healing. I went home thanking God for the total healing, but the flow did not stop. On the 13th of November, immediately we got back home from church, I sowed a seed towards the condition and made sure I tagged it, seed for stanched blood. It was a Thanksgiving seed. I kept checking and thanking God on Monday. I checked on Tuesday, believing for God's hand. 
that Tuesday morning at the administrative office of the Enthronement Assembly, Latitude, I was privileged to be at the reception when Reverend walked in. Immediately he saw me. He laid his hands on me and declared that the blood dries up immediately and I believed. I couldn't keep calm because Reverend will always tell us to check for our testimony. So I went to the restroom to check. At 2 p.m., I saw just a small drop of blood. I decided to check again at 5 p.m. and instead of more blood, the little drop at 2 p.m. was the last. After the evening session of the Breakthrough and Dominion service, I went to check again and nothing new was found. Up until now, I have not experienced or seen even a drop of blood. The nine weeks issue of blood staunched. All glory to the God of our Father, Reverend Digi Olabode, for always showing up and making this house a house of healing. Father, I give you praise, Mrs. O.O. Hello, church. My name is Ayon Shino, EHCC Talking Drummer. About a year ago, I joined the church full-time and it's been a great one for me. My business had been filled with ups and downs. I was depressed and not really happy with the way things were going. And as I listened to reverence preachings, I believed that there is more and that I can do better. So about a year ago, I spoke with Mr. Stephen Badiger about my business because I know him as a well-respected businessman. After that, he scheduled a meeting with me in his office and shared many messages about covenant practices, sowing of seeds, profit offering, and more that Reverend had shared and had preached on. And he advised me on being consistent in covenant practices and also that I make sure I keep listening to Reverend's preaching and make sure I do all that he says. After that meeting, he shared some rebranding strategies with me on how I can better position my business as a kingdom entrepreneur. He also shared some books with me that had been recommended by Reverend and his mentor. I followed through all he said. I became rooted in the church and kept listening to Reverend's messages and consistent in paying my tithes and other covenant practices. To God be the glory, this is one year after. God has blessed my business tremendously and we're also moving into a new befitting office space which will be launching this December in grand style. It's amazing what can happen in one year when you follow who no road. I'm grateful to the God of Reverend Dejolabode. Thank you daddy for teaching us right and even raising people that can inspire us too like Mr. Badejo Stephen. My daddy has given me. Total change of story, a new job. Glory to God. I am the one God has helped and I have come to give him all the glory. I quit my job at the bank where I'd worked for five years because I had stopped growing career-wise. The decision to resign wasn't logical, but I had prayed about it and told Rev about it and I felt led to resign. It seemed foolish, but I did it with the help of the Holy Spirit and support of my husband. About a week after my effective date of resignation, I got a message on LinkedIn from a distant friend way back in the university saying that he stumbled on my profile and I looked like a good fit for the role he was recruiting for. I went through tests and various interview processes and to the glory of God alone, he did it. I got the job which pays double what my last salary was and with other benefits. It's a fintech organization, a fully remote work and has clear career path. Indeed, for my shame, he has given me double honor. I typed this testimony in faith during the recruitment process and even though I was rejected at a point, they reconsidered me. Indeed, God never goes back on his promises. I am blessed to be a partaker of God's grace upon this house. Thank you, Dad, and thank you, Mom, for pouring into us ceaselessly. I give God all the praise. Mrs. O. Oh. Say. 
saved from armed robbery. I want to give God all the praise for his protection over my family. Armed robbers came to our compound between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. on Friday. Three men got into the compound, armed with pieces, kicking down doors to force their way in, threatening to kill the occupants if they refused to open. The heavy kicks and threats woke my brother and I up, and while we were peeping through the window to see what was going on, we spotted one of them moving from one door to another. We were terrified. Our door locks were not that strong, and it would have taken just a kick to open. So we quietly carried the sofa to support the door. Still peeping, we watched as they moved from the first flat to the last, skipping ours, which is in the middle. They operated for about 45 minutes. They made their way into four flats and took all their valuables, phones, laptops, money, jewelry, and others. What amazed my brother and I was how they were moving between flats, passing in front of us severally, but didn't see our door. Our co-tenants were all surprised and kept asking us if we had put a charm somewhere in the house. The only explanation we had for them was God the one who watches over us and surrounds us like the mountains surround Jerusalem. We give God all the praise for his protection, all glory and adoration to the God of our Father, Reverend Dejolabade, for watching over us. I am Kende Adigun. My annual salary jumped from 3.9 million per annum to 23 million by the Lord God of Environment's Assembly. Good morning, church. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul and give glory to the God of my father, Reverend Deji Olabode. Indeed, serving God pays. I have been in my company for over 10 years and I have been trusting God for growth and a change of company entirely. I have done several interviews, but I believe God was preparing me for the best. I always told my directorate head that this new leadership role that God had given me requires resources to take care of God's people, and I can't really do much with the current salary I am earning. And he always said, God will owe no man. During the beginning of the year, God gave me some tough instructions. I paid my first fruit and received the grace of salt mandates from my father and I was really elated. The second month, God told me to give my entire salary again. I trusted him totally and obeyed. The third month, I did some savings to do certain things and God told me to split the money into three, give one part to him, give the second part to my parents and then use the remaining. Again, I obeyed. During the 21 days fasting, I wrote my list and my husband and I trusted God so much and laid it all at his feet. When our spiritual grandfather came to the Scepter Convention Center to declare, he gave two strong Bible passages at the beginning as confirmation from God. The event was played on the screen in church. The first time when it was played, I did not hear the Bible passages. For one reason or the other, there were some technical issues and God told me, I am giving you another opportunity to listen. Again, I heard just one of the Bible passages and I did not hear the second one. And God spoke to me for a confirmation. It would be played again. And the screen went off and Reverend asked that it should be played again. And I just knew God was just giving me the response to my requests from him. The Bible passages were Revelation 21 verse 6a NIV. The second is Psalms 52 verse 9. I will praise you forever because you have done it. As God would have it, my department was asked to transcribe the same message. So every word spoken was for me. It sank in very well and I knew God had answered. Firstly, I was shortlisted for the job, which was a miracle. My father, Reverend Deji Olabode, was with me throughout the process. The first interview, he prayed for me on the phone early in the morning and said, as he has said, so shall it be, and prayed massively for me. 
After a week, I got a mail for the next stage and told my father again, and he said the same statement. As he has said, so shall it be. A former senior colleague of mine who happens to work in that company was a huge blessing to me. He prepped me for the role and just made fun that he wished he was on the panel for my interview. And I told him from your lips to God's ears. Usually a general manager was meant to be on the panel as the chairman, but the GM selected to be on the panel was traveling the same day of the interview. So he told his senior manager to represent him, which happened to be my former senior colleague. The interview went well, and as usual, they tried to play office politics, but God raised men who spoke for me, and I was called for a third interview with the GM of the department, which lasted for only five minutes. I just told God the words of my father would never fall to the ground void. I was called a week after and was told I was successful, that I should go for my medicals. During my medicals, the personnel who was in charge mentioned my BP was 175, 120, and it was not good for the job. I just looked at him and told him, that is not my BP, but you can write whatever you like on the report. I was called two days later that my medicals was successful and I was sent my offer letter. I trusted God to ensure the salary offered was beyond my imagination and it was. Please serve God with a sincere heart. In his time, it would show up. I want to thank my father and mother, Reverend Deji and Dr. Shimon Labrade for teaching us right and ensuring they activate and actualize God's royalty in us. I give God all the glory that I married into the right family and that God brought me into the best church. I am Mrs. O.D. Praise the Lord, church. Good day, church. My friend reached out to us, a group of people on an intercessory group chat, asking us to pray for him. He did not specifically mention what he wanted us to pray about, but I took it upon myself to intercede for him. Luckily, I got the message on Saturday, the 1st of July, and it was a day for our weekly Saturday powerhouse of prayer. I haven't been at the SEC physically for the Saturday prayers, but I've been joining online and I ensure not to miss it at all. Normally, when it's time to intercede for people, I randomly would pick anyone in my space to pray for, or I pray for the church. But since I wasn't physically present to pick a name to pray for, I had it in mind that when it was time to intercede for people, that I would pray for him. So when it was time to pray, I called his full name and I said, Lord, I don't know what exactly Bolu wants us to pray about, but according to his heart desires, I pray for him in the spirit. Then I started speaking in the Holy Ghost. I remember that it taught us signs of knowing when we've prayed through while interceding for others. So while I was praying, I tried my best to focus my attention on his name and his face in my spirit, and I kept on asking for a word for him. Not long after, I heard in my spirit that the Lord is calming the storm with his peace. I held on to that word, prayed according to that word till we ended the powerhouse of prayer. Then I sent the word I got to my friend. I told him that that was what I heard in my spirit while I was praying. And lo and behold, it was the exact word he got while he also prayed. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'm so glad and grateful that you're able to share this word with him because this was the same word that God laid in my heart. God has told the storm that peace be still. God is in this boat and he has calmed the storm. He was so happy and he blessed God for confirming his word. I was happy as well because it showed that I was growing as I applied all that dad has been teaching us. I'm here to return all the glory to God for using me for my friend, for confirming his word, and also for the Saturday house of power prayer. The Lord is indeed with us in this house. Glory to Jesus, Miss J.O. My missing brother returned home safely. Good day, church. I have come to give glory to the God of Reverend Dejiola Bode for bringing my brother home safely. On the 21st of June, I got a call from home that my elder brother was missing. According to my mom, he went to get bread in the next street around five, and since then, he did not return. 
I was worried, but I remembered that Reverend usually says 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 19, anytime he's praying for miracles. So I started saying it as a confession while my parents and neighbors went in search of him, but they did not find him even till midnight. My parents could not sleep at all throughout the night. I also remembered one of the 300 level enthronement classes where Reverend Deji talked about praises. I immediately told them that we should stop praising God cause he would be found. I informed Reverend and my HOD about the occurrence. My HOD sent me the same verse I was using as confession and Reverend called to pray with me in the morning. Dr. Tayo called as well and used the same verse as prayer point. On Thursday, I told God that he should remember how I am serving in his house and that he should send an helper to us to give us the right direction to find him because Reverend told us during the first anointing of the year that whatever we want from God, we will get in the place of service. My dad and his friend had gone in search of him only for someone that we had not seen or heard from in the past five years, saw my dad and asked him what he was looking for. And my dad told him, she then said she saw him just now at Ajumon. On getting to the place, they found him, and when he was asked how he got there, he said he miscalculated his journey for someone that just went to get bread in the next street. He actually trekked to Ajumo, which is very far from where we stay. I have come to thank the God of Reverend D. Giolabodi for confirming his word in his life and that of my family. Miss A. Miracle Sheet Testimony I have come to testify of God's faithfulness and to encourage others not to see the miracle sheet as another church routine. God who instructed his manservants to do this is indeed backing it up with answers. At the beginning of the year, I filled a number of the miracle sheets and any time Reverend asks us to bring out our miracle sleep, I will bring all of them out as he makes declarations on them. Two Sundays ago, Reverend asked that we bring out our miracle sleep, which I did like everyone else, and he prayed on them. He mentioned specifically that the visas are released, so I believed and received it by faith. We had applied for a family visa to Canada since last year without getting any reply. So I believed and said, come next Sunday, I will testify to this reality. During that week, I kept checking my mail as instructed by Reverend, but heard nothing. I said to myself, even the great prophet Elijah had to send his servant seven times before there was a confirmation. So come next week, I will put it up again. Last week Sunday, Reverend said we should bring out a miracle sleep. So I brought out all the ones I had written at the beginning of the year. And the Lord said to me, have you ticked all the ones I have done from those lists and thanked me for them? The voice was so clear, I thought it was the person beside me that said it to me. So I immediately went on my knees where I was at my duty post at the information desk and repented and danced for the ones he had already done. When I got home and went through all the sleeps, I discovered that indeed he has done almost all the things I wrote at the beginning of the year. I danced and thanked him for them and the many things he has done and went about my week's activities. On Wednesday, 21st June, I got a mail that the family visa to Canada has been approved and that we should submit our passports for further documentation. I have come to say thank you, Lord. I am J.O. Mega professional open door at Reverend Deji Olabode's prophecy. Good morning, church. The Lord has done it again. Reverend prophesied two Sundays ago that there are more mega professional doors to be opened and that it is our season of showers of blessings. I keyed into it and believed that the same God of Reverend Deji Olabode that has done it for others will do mine, and I added it to my miracle sheet two days ago. The Lord blessed me with an additional international job with a salary in multiples of what my present job pays. It came without any form of stress. At every juncture of the process, I enjoyed favor. 
I bless God for the day he brought me into this ministry at Lesbora Hall back in my school days and the mercy to never look back since then. I thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for being a spiritual cover over me and all mine. DSA. My Auto Accident Deliverance Testimony I have come to return all the glory to God. I was involved in an auto accident in September, and to the glory of God, none of us involved in the accident were hurt. The second part of my testimony was after the accident occurred, my car insurance declined to make repairs after investigating the accident, because at the time of the accident, I was working as a rideshare driver, and I was then threatened with a lawsuit by the other driver's insurance company. To that effect, I sent my seats to the SEC project at the headquarters church and Oshobo church. And to the glory of God, the rideshare company called me to inform me that they would be taking care of the damages to my car and other person's car. For my car, they sent me the exact amount I purchased the vehicle. The third part of my testimony was I had to make an appearance in court due to the citation received from the accident. Despite the devil's attempt to make the situation worse by getting me convicted, the resident pastor of the Oshogo Church declared that mercy would speak for me. And to the glory of God, mercy indeed did not fail as the whole case was discarded and I was only asked to pay a fine to the city. I'm grateful to God for the enthronement assembly and the gift of covering by our father. Glory to God. I am Mr. B.A. God has delivered me from masturbation and pornography. Hello church, I have come to testify to the goodness of God in my life. He delivered me completely from addiction to pornography and masturbation. My deliverance is complete and I have come to say thank you Jesus for forgiving me and starting a brand new chapter in my life. Hallelujah, I am DF. Testimony of Healing After yesterday's evening session of our prayers and fasting, I left my streaming center and went home. On getting home, I immediately started noticing a very unusual growth on my lips. At first, I didn't pay attention. Then the growth started becoming bigger and so noticeable. I got really scared that one of my neighbors even saw it and was like I should go and get myself treated immediately. I then remembered the mantle my father, the Reverend De Jolabo, they gave to us and said we should use the mantle whenever we needed intervention. Then I took the mantle and placed it on the lips and started praying even though my mouth was so heavy to even open. After the prayer, I felt a relief but I held on to my faith according to the word of God's servant. All glory to God, because as I woke up this morning, it was the first thing I checked that I saw that the swollen lips had gone down. Thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for all you release upon us. God is indeed in this house. I am Mr. David. Rent and phone paid for. I have come to thank the God of Reverend Deji Olabode and also share my two-in-one testimony. My rent was going to expire in October and due to the financial challenges I'd been facing earlier in the year, I wasn't going to be able to meet up with the payment. So I reached out to my landlady in September for an extension to pay in installments from October to December she refused and asked me to move out if I can't meet up with the payment. I pleaded with her and explained why I wasn't able to meet up with the payment, but all fell on deaf ears. On the first of the month, during the second service, while we're praying the prayers our spiritual grandfather sent, First Samuel 7.12 jumped at me and God told me he would be my Ebenezer this month. 
I was happy because I thought God was talking to me about my rent, but I didn't know that I was going to see something big. When Reverend declared the fast, I decided I was going to participate throughout the fast because I remembered that I received my miracle house and job during last year's fast. So I said, this year won't pass me by as I had major things I wanted God to do for me. On the 5th of October, my phone fell into the water closet and I thought it was something I would be able to fix, but I was told to bring 105,000 Naira to fix the phone. 105,000 Naira was a lot given the circumstance. Not having a phone stressed me because I wasn't able to work and I wasn't also reachable. I had to start working from a cyber cafe where I paid 2,000 Naira every day and it wasn't easy. I became worried because my rent was there, now my phone. But I kept on holding to God's word that it would be my Ebenezer and I also joined the fast. Two weeks after my phone spoiled, I decided to post on my Instagram page with my laptop explaining why I had not been available and the situation of things. A few hours later, I went back to the post and saw that a sister of mine in the U.S. had responded to my post asking which phone got spoiled. I immediately responded to her DM and she said she wanted to help me with a phone. That what phone would I want to get? I told her the phone and she sent me part of the money. Another friend who saw my posts also offered to help, but the money wasn't enough. My friends who knew the situation decided to loan me the money pending when I could pay back. My phone was sorted. All efforts to get my rent before the due date proved abortive and as the days to pay moved closer, I began to get scared and afraid. I wasn't emotionally okay. I was just crying. I was exhausted and frustrated. It was tiring, but each time I'm about to lose faith, Reverend would declare a word during the evening service and it would look like he really saw what I was going through. When he gave us the handkerchiefs, I wasn't available on site that day, but I got mine on Sunday. And when I get home that day, I placed it on the wall of my house and said that Reverend said we should put this mantle on anything we wanted God to do for us and it would come to pass. So my rent is paid in Jesus name. The previous Sunday during the second service, two of the testimonies shared spoke about how rents were paid miraculously and immediately I started laughing because I knew that the word was for me. I keyed into the testimonies and trusted that I would share mine soon. When I got home, I prayed and then I remembered that mommy preached during the Thanksgiving service earlier in the year and told us that praise is one of the tools to access territorial dominion and I decided to start dancing and worshipping God. I still cried again after all this so I cried myself to sleep and when I woke up I was led to go to the office physically as I have been working remotely for a while. I struggled to get out of bed but I obeyed. Getting to work my group CEO came into my MD's office and saw me then he said Ingi see me later today. I said, okay, sir. I was so scared because that's my boss's topmost boss, the group CEO. I was like, what did I do? I went to the bathroom to cry and pray. On getting to his office, he just said, how are you? I told him, fine. And he said, what's your bank? I was wondering what was going on. And he said, what bank do you use? I told him and he said, call it. I did. And he said, you can go. He sent me one million naira. When I received the money, I closed my app first and then used my handkerchief to clean my eyes. Then I opened it again and saw the money. I was like, Inyolua, this is one million naira? I couldn't believe myself. I had to use my pen to count the zeros to be able to believe that I was seen well. I didn't even believe until I transferred my rent and it went through. Even my landlady said, ah, God will surprise you as you have surprised me. 
my group CEO sent me the exact amount needed to pay my rent and also pay the loan I took from my friends. I have come back to give glory and honor to God for confirming his word and for being my Ebenezer indeed. Dad, I want to thank you and mommy for being parents indeed for me. I celebrate and honor you both so much. I am grateful to God for you. I am Inyolua Alabi. A new job and restoration of my marriage. Dear church, I'd like to give thanks for my answered prayers. For the past five months, I have been out of work and I have not been able to get anything that would be sufficient. When I joined the fast, I heard a message that said to write down our desires or prayers we need answered. To the glory of God, I got a message on Thursday the 26th that I have been offered employment at some place I applied to since August. Also, for the past three years, I and my husband have been more co-parenting than a married couple. It was one of those things I wrote down. I started praying about it at the beginning of last week. I almost got discouraged because he called me to say he wanted a divorce. This was not the first time, but every time I would plead and reason with him. This time around, I had had it and decided that I was not going to try to convince him against that cause of action. On Saturday, I felt led in my spirit to pray once again. I also decided to wrap our marriage certificate around the mantle we got from church last week Sunday. We were going to have a conversation with his parents that Saturday night. All through the day, I prayed to God and asked him to change his heart of stone to a heart of flesh. That evening, during the conference call with his parents, he was still insisting that he did not want a resolution. After the call ended, he called me back and we had a long conversation. To the glory of God, he is no longer intent on pursuing a divorce. I give God all the glory because he has once again shown me favor. Mrs. O.S. Mm -hmm.